What is your name and what style do you practice and how did you get into it? My name is David Ippen. I practice traditional Taekwondo. I've been practicing for 24 years now and I got into traditional Taekwondo because my brother, one of my brothers, was friends with the local school owner at that time and he introduced me to him and asked me to try out a class and that's how that started. Okay. Tell me about your style, what the name means, the history, uh, the teachers. Um, my style of Taekwondo, we call it traditional Taekwondo. It's derived from the style of Taekwondo that Grandmaster Kwon Jewa introduced to Germany and Europe in 1965. He is the president of the Yeonmu Kwan Taekwondo Federation or in Korea, in Busan. And my lineage is sort of derived from there. Right now we're separate because the Kwan Jewa Taekwondo system does, does no, uh, doesn't exist anymore. And uh, we just maintain the same style of Taekwondo that was introduced. It's basically the original Taekwondo that came over um, in 65 when they started introducing it to the world. What does the, the name Taekwondo mean? Taekwondo literally means the way of the hand and the foot. Te refers to all kicking techniques. It just, it just means foot, but it means all kicking te techniques. Kwan means fist or hand and refers to all punching or striking techniques. And Do, like many other martial arts, stands for the spiritual path, the way, literally, um, to pursue martial arts. It ties in with the other Budo martial arts that all sort of share a similar philosophy. What is the strategy of Taekwondo? I would say the main strategy of Taekwondo is perfecting yourself spiritually, mentally, and physically, obviously. It's also the pursuit of perfection in terms of the skills you attain in the martial art. It's more conquering yourself, even though conquering is not the appropriate term, because it, it says that you're battling yourself. You're working with yourself to become better, and through your power, through your attained power and um, enlightenment, so to speak, your own personal growth, you try to create more peace and harmony within yourself and your environment. Perfect. So tell me about the forms in your style, where did they come from, and what are kata or forms good for? Um, the patterns in traditional Taekwondo are very important. They are a crucial part of our martial art. Um, we, have, we follow a system called the Chang Hon patterns. There are 24 that were developed by General Che, um, who introduced Taekwondo to Korea in 55, who actually founded Taekwondo uh, alongside other masters. And he created those patterns based on his knowledge of Shotokan Karate that he brought back from Japan. Um, traditionally, we only used to practice 20 patterns. And then later in the, late to, uh, yeah, in the late 60s, early 70s, he created four more to complete the system. Um, our system has 24, as I said before, which represent one complete day. So each form represents an hour in a person's day which is symbolic for an entire lifespan of practicing Taekwondo. Um, our forms are very close in terms of the movements and the execution to uh, traditional Japanese styles. They all start and end at the same spot, which represents not only closure, but that's you know when you always end where you start. You finish what you do. Um, it also represents your entire life circle of that you come back to your origin after you finish what you do and your achievement is sort of what you can produce in terms of technique during your form. Um, and I think forms are nowadays are undervalued. Um, forms are very important not only because they perpetuate the knowledge of our particular martial art, they include the technical variety that Taekwondo has to offer. They're also a means to to train for yourself when you have no one else to train with. They're, um, they help you recover after injury and they're you know, great mental practice too because you can practice your forms without body movement at all. You can just do it mentally by visualizing them. And um, Hyung, as we call it, patterns, Hyung is the Korean word um, for patterns like kata and karate. Um, have multiple applications and multiple purposes. Obviously, learning techniques is one of them. That's just the basic, the fun, fundamental aspect of why we practice forms. Um, it also was used as a means to practice 
your technique at full force and full speed. And if you look at a lot of the patterns, you have movements that you cannot practice on a partner safely. For example, like a finger strikes to the eyes or the throat without causing damage to your partner. So that's one way of practicing your technique and perfecting it too. Um, it also, the forms, the patterns that we do are meant to be a uh, fight against multiple imaginary opponents. So we interpret our patterns very dynamic and very explosive. Because it's supposed to be that. You're supposed to not only understand the attack or the defense movements that you do, but you're supposed to understand the opposite side too at the same time. Which, on a much deeper level, leads you to really understanding what you do and to understand both sides, attack and defense, which really, which really leads to completion within yourself and to understand what happens with other people. And it also generates a sense of respect towards not only other people but human life in general. If you know what this particular strike could do to another person, you know that you don't want to use it, only if you really have to. And for me, um, personally, and I think um, in generally in Taekwondo, forms are a means to perfect yourself and harmonize yourself too, because you can always get better at forms. Um, you can always practice them over and over again, and there's always that little extra that you can do. The stance can be a little bit better, the strike can be a little bit more to the left, more to the right, higher, lower. It can be a little bit better, you know, it's just, and then you know that life basically is constant refinement. It's all about perfecting yourself. It's all about striving to be better. And that's, for me, that's the core of martial arts. It's becoming as perfect as you can be, even if you can never attain this state. But it's seeking that. And it's seeking it within yourself, not to overcome another person, but it's to overcome yourself, your own limitations, and to reach a state of perf close to perfection and mastery that you as much as you can despite the fact that you are human within your limitations. So you're basically conquering the limitations of what it means to be a human being. You're basically defying what it means to be human and you're trying to defy the confinements of life and the restrictions of your body in terms of getting something that is a little bit more. And that's what patterns mean to me. It's an expression of this, of this struggle. It's a very serious thing that you do. And I think a very worthwhile endeavor too. Tell me about the historical okay. side. Um, also in, in traditional Taekwondo, our patterns, they all are named after important events in Korean history, after important people and their achievement. And they all, every form, every pattern has a theme to it. And certain strikes symbolize certain events or, you know, for example, a left hand strike uh, would represent uh, at the end of the pattern represents the, the tragic death of somebody or so there, there's a symbolic component to what we do too and historic component so people learn about the history of the martial art that they do it's tied in um, and these that's how the forms were in traditional taekwondo how they were meant to be like that so the student not only learns the martial art but they learn the history and the culture of the people who invented it put it together and that's a very important component as well and then um, in terms of what mistakes people make when they practice their forms, I would say a lot of people, a lot of students that I know, they, they're not aware of all the components um, that go into practicing patterns that are, you know, not just knowledge based in terms of technique or history or, you know, just the basic sequence of the movements. Um, they don't understand what it does for them, how, what the benefits are for them, um, psychologically, mentally and, and uh, spiritually and they don't take them seriously it's a chore it's something you do to pass a grade it's something you know you have to do this in order to get your next belt rank and every serious martial artist understands that belt does not belt rank does not matter at all at all you know it's a piece of cotton you wear you give your rank meaning it's you know how you wear your rank it's not something that you achieve put on the wall and say great um, so I think people don't understand how important patterns are not only to perpetuate traditional martial arts to keep the spirit alive but also to really work with themselves and to progress. I think a prime example for this is a lot of people who are into um, combative martial arts, especially these days, that focus only on striking and, and kicking and punching other people. When they get older, they don't have the ability to, to step in the ring anymore. What do they do now? 
and I've met people who have been doing um, martial, martial arts that focus primarily on, on um, hitting people in the ring for a long time and they started doing traditional taekwondo when they're in the mid late 40s because they wanted to practice martial arts but they couldn't do it anymore. There's no way they would step in a ring anymore and fight somebody who's 20 years younger than them. So they think they really start to appreciate the option of practicing martial techniques in a set pattern, in, in forms, without contact. I think it's a very it's a very beneficial way of practicing it. And, and it also uh, gives people the option to practice martial arts their entire life, which not all martial arts can offer, quite frankly. And I think the traditional martial arts have a really good angle there because they're supposed to promote health and they're supposed to be a lifelong um, task. And if you just hit a punching bag, that's not a lifelong task. That's not enough, in my opinion, to do that your entire life. That's always a part of the whole, but not the whole in itself. Um, and I also think patterns are less appealing to a lot of people because it is a structure and you have to master it. And I think a lot of people find it frustrating to master a pattern because it takes time. And it, especially in this society, in this stage, in the day and age, people like to attain things quickly. And you can't acquire a pattern quickly. It takes a long time. And if you look at traditional martial arts, if you do a, a one single pattern for 10, 20, 30 years, then after a while, you, d you discover new things about it that you didn't know before. And with growing experience, you learn what this pattern means and what it does, and you, you experience all the different levels of that. And that's very rewarding, but most people never get to that stage because they dabble into it a little bit and then they sort of have the sequence down, they just move on to the next and next and next and next. And that's not how it works. I think people lack patience. And I think that's the biggest problem right now is the lack of patience and the lack of perseverance in terms of really working with what they have instead of looking for something outside of themselves or something new. They want the new flavor, but there's Basically, it's always the same thing anyways, just in different sequences. So it doesn't matter if you have this or this, but again, it's patience. And our society is so fast-paced that it's hard for people to come back to themselves, to center themselves and focus on what they have. And understand that this is already enough. It's all there, they just, they just don't see it. And I think it takes a certain level of maturity to realize this. And for most people, that idea, that understanding kicks in only after decades of training, which is sad because they should have it already. But I think as, as martial arts teachers and as traditional martial arts teachers, we should try to instill this knowledge into the students so they understand what it is they're doing. Instead of just saying, yeah, do this 500, 000, 500 times, 1,000 times, and then eventually they'll get it. Like the old days where it's just like you practice this, you know, 100 times and maybe I'll show you something next year in addition to that. But people don't operate like this anymore. Yeah. You look at YouTube, you can see, look up anything that you want. I mean, I remember for us learning new patterns was a very exclusive thing. There was no YouTube, there was no internet. You couldn't look it up. They didn't have books about this topic either. So if you wanted to learn more technique, you had to come to class and wait. And that doesn't happen anymore today, which is sad, because all people always go look for the new thing, the next, the next, the next, instead of working with what they have. Kan Bun Weichi said that for three years, all he did was San Chin. That's all they taught him. <laughs> Actually, for the first six months, all he did was sweep the dojo. <laughs> Our grandmaster from yeah. Korea told us that when he started Taekwondo, when he was a kid in Korea in the 40s or the 50s, um, all he did for the first year was horse dance. Nothing else. That's all he did. And I remember when I started Taekwondo, we had very limited technique. It was just very simple. A lot of repetition, no verbal instruction, just do it and watch and shut up. And that's it. All the time. And then eventually you get to understand and then you learn more and more and more. And then, oh, you did, then you start to get it. But a lot of people don't get it and they, they give up and they don't understand the spirit of this. They get frustrated, but it's, it's how it is.